Welcome back to the long form, to the improvisation, to this space in which I explore the hidden realms, the, the untrodden paths that stem from my mind into the void, right? There's going to be moments of silence. This is not going to be edited like this so you don't waste a single moment of your life. No. We need space. We need time for the creative brain to flourish. So if you don't like scenes where things are drawn out slowly or David Lynch shows you someone sweeping the floor for minutes on end, this might not be for you. But perhaps if I edit like this, you will stay. No. I've been talking about why aliens haven't visited us yet, openly, right? Because they are here, but not openly. They're not wearing the alien t-shirt, right? And before I start that uh, discourse, that train of thought, I want to share something. Alien and angel, they have the same number of letters, and only one letter is different in each word. I don't think that's by chance, that's by design. It happens also in Spanish, because angel and sounds this, it's spelled the same in Spanish, naturally. And I think aliens are simply the 2.0 version of angels. Angels in the Middle Ages, in the Biblical times, and before and shortly after, because those images, those conceptions of, of beings that are from a different realm, right, that inhabit different dimensions and perhaps worlds and universes, they are deeply rooted in our material present, right, so therefore a spaceship is the continuation of an airplane, an aircraft, right, and even spaceships are sometimes designed in, in all those sci-fi movies and series like even cathedrals, right, that are floating in space and traveling through time as well. So that's why you had witches in the Middle Ages and after, because they knew brooms, they knew what they were, and they created that projection based on an objective something that existed in their lives, correct? Therefore, spaceship is the evolution of the arm, of the airplane, sorry. So why are they not openly greeting us, these angels slash aliens? They are waiting for things to happen, as you will know because you've watched my whole series of why aren't aliens here already. And one of the things you're waiting for is for humans to stop being the slaves of pets. How come? You might say, well, but dog is the man's best friend or the woman's best help friend or the it or whatever your denomination is best friend. Well, many truths can coexist in, a, in an open mind, right? And we can be slaves of our own slaves. What do I mean by that? We walk them and we have to pick up their excrement. They don't pick up our shit when we go to the bathroom. They might want to eat it, depending if you do it, if you take a dump in the middle of your living room, but they don't clean after you and they don't eat your shit, unless you train them, which they might do, of course. But when you walk them out, and I hope you do, you pick up their shit, and I hope you do that as well. Otherwise, you should dwell in the 10th circle of hell. So aliens are watching us going down, feeling that warm, mushy substance through a plastic bag, right? But you can feel the warmth. You can feel how it disintegrates when you even try to pick it up with, with the most delicate touch you can conjure through your fingers. Yet, it is a slave's task. And there the dog goes and just dumps and throws shit everywhere, and you go back and you pick it up. Hopefully you pick it up. They're waiting for us to realize we are at the apex of the pyramid of evolution, which is not a source of pride, but it's just a fact. 
and that entails a lot of responsibilities that we should embrace, of course. It's not a source of pride or joy, but it is something that we need to do to embrace and accept that responsibility. Therefore, aliens are there waiting. They are becoming the slaves of, the, of their pets. What's happening? Why haven't they invented uh, the true vaporizer? Or is you spray that substance on the, on the poo and whew, just goes into nothingness, right? Or a machine or a robot that picks it up. Right? We haven't yet. We have some mechanical devices that they do not work as well. So they're waiting. They're waiting for us to stop being slaves to pets, to come up with ingenious inventions to stop going down and just picking up the shit. They're not waiting for us to develop a paraphilia of eating our do own dog's shit. That, that's not what they want because I communicate with them. They don't want you to find a friend who likes to eat shit and just go on the walk with both of them, your dog and that friend, so your friend can eat the shit after your dog. They don't want that either. I mean, that that's kind of a closed system in a way. But then your friend would be dumping extra shit and therefore creating a lot of ecological problems, right? So there, therein lies the paradox. We are our best friend's slaves and vice versa. Two truths coexisting in a single space. So I challenge you, my friend, find a way to pick up the shit. Not only to shovel your way out of the shit, but pick it up without any hustle, without showing the aliens that we are slaves. We are embracing the apex of the evolutionary spot at the top of the pyramid and we can slowly dissolve the veils that separate us from all those extra dimensions that are here. They are here because the Rabbi Menachem once said I think in the somewhere in the 18th or 19th century that if we humans didn't have all the veils that separate us from every creature that is around us right now, we wouldn't be able to see one feet away from us because of all the beings that are populating this space. Perhaps you're not able to see me right now because they're swishing around, but I hope you are. And I hope you take my word to heart and we can start tearing this veil between us and the immortals. I'll see you very soon.